So if you read the sentence, it talks about two things being equal. If such and such and such and such are equal, what are the two things? What are the objects? The tenth and which? Twentieth. The tenth and twentieth partial psalms. That's what they're talking about. Okay. Well, we have language to say the tenth partial psalm. We would say the partial psalm up to term ten. That's the tenth partial psalm. Does that make sense? They're saying if that tenth partial psalm is equal to the twentieth partial psalm, if those really are equal, then uh, prove what? What is it that we're required to prove? The thirtieth one is zero. Hmm. Prove that the thirtieth one is zero. Okay. Pick up your pen now. You have the skeleton of what you've got to do now. You've got a basis from which to start, and you've got a destination, right? Just like a trig identity proof or geometry proof or anything like that. So now, how do we do this? Okay. Well, this is talking about APs. Do you remember that? I know you're probably not up to this um, exercise yet, but everything in 6i is about arithmetic progressions. So therefore, I know more than just general stuff about the nth partial sum. I actually have a formula for the nth partial sum. When it comes to APs, right? Remember we talked about the story of Gauss? He paired up terms. Do you remember what's in here? Do you remember? We only looked at this morning, so. Yeah, so you go with the first term and the last term, right? And if you want to work out what the last term is, then you get A plus N minus 1 D. There's two A's, so that's why I have two A at the front. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Now, using this formula, I can work out what S10 and S20 are, right? And I can assume that this is true because they told me in the question. So you help me work out what am I going to write on the left-hand side? What is S10 if that's a general partial sum? I'll give you a clue. It starts with the number 10. What am I going to write on top of that? This is n on 2 that I'm beginning with, right? Which in this case is 10 on 2, which is 5. That's the first bit. Now, do I know what the first term is? Does the question tell you? So this could be anything, right? So I'm just going to have to leave it as 2a. But I do know what n minus 1 is because I know which partial sum I'm dealing with. So what do I write next? 9 lots. Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you. Um, 9 lots are the common difference, and that's it. That's the whole formula. Apparently, so the question says, that's equal to the 20th partial sum. So what's that going to have on the right-hand side? There's the n on 2. I still don't know what the first term is. But now I know how many common differences there will be there. There will be 19 of them. OK, now this statement is true, but it is not immediately apparent how it has anything to do with this. That's OK. Sometimes you're not sure where you're going to go. What's your instinct when you look at that line? What would you like me to do? There's loads of stuff I can simplify here, right? Loads of stuff. For example, um, I can just divide these through. That's going to give me 5. That's going to give me 10. What would you like me to do now? I could expand. There's nothing wrong with expanding. But before I do, I notice that these two numbers are also connected to each other, right? So before expanding, I might as well divide both sides by 5, which means I don't have to worry about that guy. OK, so one less thing to expand. I've got this on the left. And I've got 4a plus 30d on the right. Everything looks true. I have no idea what the relevance of this is yet, but that's OK. Let's see where this goes. What would you like me to do now? I can simplify, but before I do this, I want to point out, remember I said this is a proof, just like a trig identity proof, just like a geometry proof. Now, in a geometry proof, like, you remember some of those circle geometry proofs? You'd, you'd, get a, you'd get a diagram, and there'd be, you know, there'd be a million angles flying around, and you're like, I don't know, I don't know what's related to anything. And, you could, if you wanted to, just find out what every angle is equal to. But of course, that's a very inefficient way to go about things. You know particular angles you want to go for, and so you don't just do things randomly, you go for things purposefully. Now, I could simplify this, but as you guys know, simplify means a lot of things, right? Simplify, sometimes it means factorize. 
Sometimes simplify means expand. Sometimes simplify means turn two fractions into one. Sometimes it means turn one fraction into two. So now you have to pause. How am I going to work out what simplify means in this context? In circle geometry and in a trig identity proof, the way you can know what simple means in that context is where you are going. It's the destination. That's why it's so important to state that right at the outset. Okay? So what would it look like for that to be true? What is S of 30? Well, it's, it's going to look like this, isn't it? It's going to look like this. It's going to have, a, um, it's going to have 30 on 2 at the front. Right? We know what that's equal to. What's it going to have in the brackets? OK. Now, 30 on 2, that's 15. The only way that this thing could be 0 is, well, this thing's not going to be 0. So that means this thing needs to be 0. Does that make sense? If I can establish that, then I'm done. So now you know what simplify means in this context. Now you know what to do with this thing. You want to find where that is, right? Where's that in here? OK? So what do I do? If I put it all on the, by this, by the looks of it, all on the right hand side, subtract all of this over there, then you're going to be left with 0 on this side and 2a plus 29d. Now, the reason why I stopped before I wrote this line is because almost no one would say, oh, thank goodness, it's simplified now. <laughs> that doesn't look simplified. But in the context of this question, that's exactly what you need. Right? I can now say, what would I do? Um, I would say this. I know it looks weird to multiply everything by some number, but again, in this context, that is simplified because that, that's S30. Do you see that? Do you see, do you see what I did? Right? So no one, like, oh yeah, you, did you learn about simplifying? How simplifying means multiplying things by random numbers? You have to know where you're going and that decides what your working will be. Make sense?